What's going on YouTube? I just got back from the Chicago uh, Lorcana Challenge and uh, it was my first big TCG event and I know there's lots of other people just coming into, into the hobby. Um, I didn't grow up playing uh, TCG games, so I wanted to share with you um, 10 things I wish I had known before going to the challenge. Um, some of these are pretty straightforward and, and simple, uh, but I thought it would be maybe useful um, just to share some information from somebody who was there for the first time um, and is just coming into the space. Uh, the first thing is don't be afraid to call a judge. Um, I struggled with this over the weekend. I'm pretty new to these spaces um, and to this kind of high level competitive gameplay. Um, and I didn't want to be an asshole. I didn't want to be somebody that was calling the judge on everything or everyone. Um, but there were certain situations throughout the weekend where I felt like my willingness to not call a judge allowed me to be taken uh, advantage of. Um, there was a really big situation in like round um, six where somebody was missing Diablo triggers and I didn't call a judge uh, for a majority of the round and then it got to a really important situation and I called a judge um, but it was kind of a, a tight call and the judge didn't rule in my favor. Um, and if I had called the judge earlier in the match I would have established a pattern um, of that behavior from my opponent and maybe would have had a different ruling, um, you know, at a point when it really mattered later in the match. Um, on this same token or on this same vein, don't be afraid to review, to appeal the ruling. Um, they said this at the beginning, um, they introduced the head judge, um, and that you can appeal to the head judge. And, um, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't want to make a scene. I didn't want to, um, you know, be an asshole. Um, but this is pretty accepted uh, practice. Um, you know, later throughout the weekend, after I called a judge on a different thing, I was talking to uh, this judge, and the judge reiterated, like, don't be afraid to appeal. If you don't like their ruling, you can appeal it, and you can keep appealing it until you go to the head judge. Um, you know, sometimes that ruling is not going to change, uh, and that's just the way it is, but sometimes it might change. Um, you know, if you know the rules and you know um, how something should be be ruled um, and the judge is not ruling in your favor, feel free to escalate. Not, you know, um, everyone is doing their best and, and everyone is doing the best with the understanding they have of the rules. Um, so uh, don't be afraid to, to escalate. Um, you're not an asshole. Uh, you know, within reason. If you're calling, uh, you know, the judge for every little thing and you're trying to get your opponent disqualified, yeah, you might be kind of an asshole or a jerk. But um, there are some real things that that matter. And I think if you are not calling a judge on them, you're doing yourself a disservice. And um, I think I shot myself in the foot a lot this weekend by not calling a judge in a situation when I should have. Uh Second thing I wish I'd known, manage the clock. Be aware of the clock, both for you and your opponent. Your opponent may not be aware of the clock. Um, this is fairly easy in the main event uh, because the main event is best of two. So um, it's like 45 minute rounds um, and it's a little bit easier to uh, get your games done, to get two games done in 45 minutes. Um, side events are best of three. Um, and they still only give you 50 minutes. So, uh, you know, you've got less time to try to get your match in. Um, and in the main event, there's a clock in each corner of the room. And so it's fairly easy to look up and see them. Um, you're not allowed to have your phone out on the table. Um, but for the side events, um, you know, they also don't really want you to have your phone out on the table, uh, but there may or may not be a visible clock. So, um, you know, be really aware of the timing um, of, of how long you're taking. Um, overall, try to play quickly. Uh, be aware of time. Concede early in game two if you're probably going to lose game two to ensure that there's time for game three uh, where you will play first. Um, and... If your game goes to turns, um, make sure you have clarity on what the tiebreakers are going to be. 
Um, this one, I'm going to take a few minutes here um, and and kind of talk through a situation that I had um, where uh, I called a judge and um, I was a little frustrated with the way that things went down. So uh, my apologies to my fellow competitor um, in, in this situation. I, I wasn't upset at the competitor. I was upset at the lack of clarity in the way that the rules were going to be applied. Um, so talk to the judges before the round or before the tournament or before the event to make sure you understand how prize tickets are going to be awarded and how ties will be broken. Um, what is written or presented in graphics may not be followed by judges on the floor, even after appeal. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it's really important to um, check in with the judges to really understand um, what is going to happen. There were uh, times when uh, things that are written in the comprehensive rules were not followed. Um, for example, uh, we were playing sealed and uh, somebody next to me asked if we would be allowed to switch out cards in between rounds. Um, so if you played game one and you didn't like how your um, sealed deck was performing, uh, your 40 card deck, you could they allowed us to switch to other cards that you pulled from your 72 uh, cards and alter your deck. Um, from my reading of the comprehensive rules, that's not allowed. Um, but the judges allowed it. Um, so, you know, if you have a question, talk to a judge because some people might have talked to a judge and might have gotten a ruling on that. Uh, that is different than what is written. And so if you are a rule follower like me, um, you might put yourself at a disadvantage. And so make sure you talk to the judges and understand the rules that are being applied for the tournament. And I think this is really important for tiebreakers. So the um, the events that were uh, pre-scheduled and um, that you signed up for ahead of time were uh, supposed to be uh, done as a three Swiss round. Um, you'll notice uh, the difference here between a three Swiss round and a single elimination over on the on-demand side events. So the on-demand was single elimination. So you went into uh, a little draft pod or a little starter pod of eight people and you would get matched up with someone. And if you lost a game, it was over. You were out. Um, if you won a game, you'd get two tickets. If you uh, won your second game, you would get five tickets. And if you won that last game, you would get 10 tickets on top of your one participation um, ticket. So that's how these were working. And these are single elimination. Um, these were three Swiss rounds. So you played three rounds no matter what. And then depending on your record, uh, you would get tickets. Um, and in practice, though, um, this was not what was followed. Um, what was followed was slightly different. And um, basically, they came by at every game and they put four tickets on the table. Um, if you were in the winner's bracket, if you were trying to go 3-0, and um, they would put the extra tickets for that final game. And the winner would take the tickets. And the way that they ruled it for these sealed events is that um, the winner would take the tickets and there had to be a winner. There was no drawing in, uh, in these scheduled side events, which is not actually the case in the comprehensive rules or the tournament rules for three Swiss rounds. So uh, I'm going to show you here quickly. So this is the like match procedure rules in the comprehensive uh, tournament rules. Um, and it says once time has been called in a round, no new game should begin. Any games in progress will immediately proceed to the end of match procedure as follows. The active player finishes their turn, their turn zero. After that, there's five turns total remaining in the game. Each turn taken after the turn during which time was called will count towards the five game total, regardless of her, whose turn it is, right? So turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five. 
Uh, normally, this means that the active player, when time was called, will get two turns and the non-active player will get three turns. If the game ends during these turns, the match is reported normally. If neither player has won the game at the end of turn five, and one player has more game wins than the other, that player wins the match. So uh, if one player wins game one and you're in the middle of game two and uh, you don't finish game two in turns, uh, the person who won game one wins the match, right? Um, that's how, how that... Uh, uh, that that's how that um uh how that works right if neither player has won the game at the end of turn five and one player has more game wins than the other that player wins the match swiss rounds if neither player has won the game at the end of turn five award match points as described in three three to any player who has won at least one game so uh we would each get three points um, if neither player has won any game in the match at the end of turn five, the game is a draw. Single elimination. If neither player has won the game at the end of turn five and both players have the same number of game wins and the same lore, the match continues until one player has more lore than the other. Once this happens, the player with the higher lore wins the game immediately, right? So that's the single elimination rules. However, the judges were applying this tie-breaking rule to the three-round Swiss for uh, sealed, right? So uh, if you finished two games and you went to game three and game three ended in turns, whoever had the most lore at the end of game five won uh, or at the end of the five rounds won. Um, and the situation I was in was I was with an opponent that was playing very slowly, thus the the note on manage the clock. And uh, I should have conceded game one earlier. Um, it was pretty close. She had an Isabella. I was able to remove the Isabella. Um, but I probably was not going to win the game. I ended up conceding when it was like 15 lore to like nine. So I conceded game one, we went to game two. Game two was also a very long and grindy game. I went first. Um, we ended up going to turns. I won the game on turn two, right? I was turn zero, she was turn one, I was turn two. I won game two on, uh, on turn two. So at the end of turn five, it was one, one. And yet the judges gave her the entire match and she got all of the tickets for that. So that's what I mean that it's really important to understand the tiebreakers because that was not announced. That was not understood by any of the competitors. Um, it was not something that was told to us at the beginning. Um, what was told to us at the beginning of the sealed event was if you, you're still playing at the end and it goes to turns, uh, flag down a judge and we'll let you know what the tie-breaking procedure is. Um, but I would have drastically changed the way I would have played that match if I had understood that that was going to happen if we didn't finish game two, right? I would have played very fast, especially in game two because I was on the play and I, I had a better chance of winning regardless, right? So... Um, that was a real frustration for me in the moment. Um, I got a little bit frustrated with the judge. Um, sorry, you know, it's a it's a, a moment of um, kind of escalated intensity. It was like four o'clock on Sunday. I was trying to get my last tickets to, to redeem on the prize wall. Um, and if I had known how the tiebreakers were going to um, be executed and if they were done in a consistent way and in a way that was consistent with how they were advertised it it wouldn't have been a problem for me right but the the fact that it wasn't um done in the way that it was advertised that it was going to be done uh was was really frustrating to me so make sure you understand how things are going to be done um uh you know this even in single elimination bracket in best of three, it means in practice, this means the players will play games until one player has won two games. But that's not what happened, right? We were 1-1. One, one. 
and uh, we didn't even have a chance to start that third game. I would have been on the draw. I probably would have lost. Um, you know, I, I don't know what would have happened with, you know, f starting a game with five turns. Like, I, I don't know. It, it would have been very strange. Um, the rules don't really address the situation. Um, I think from my perspective, we should have just split the tickets and each person should have just gotten two. Uh, because at the end of time, we were tied 1-1 and there was no game in progress um, at that point since we finished the game that was in turns. Um, so it's kind of a hole, I think, in the in the tournament rules. Um, but th the point here is is understand the way that things are going to be ruled um, and, and really understand your situation so that you can um, uh, adjust your gameplay to match. Uh, just one more thing from this was PPG's um, uh, event, and this was just that the judge should be informed, um, and the the judge, uh, you know, needs to understand that you comprehend the subsequent steps, um, and that it should follow the end of match procedure, which is what I was just showing. All right, on to the next one. Um, this one's a little bit lighter. Uh, make friends and work together. Uh, attend your locals and make friends. Um, you'll see your local competitors of the challenge. I can't count the number of people that I saw in Chicago that I've played with all over the Bay Area, whether it was at my local in, in Berkeley, whether it was uh, at the other store in Berkeley that I go to, or or whether it was uh, in Alameda where I play sometimes, or um, you know down in the South Bay. Like I play all over the Bay Area, and because of that, I knew a lot of people that were there, and uh, it gave me people to hang out with. It gave me you know people to to check in with who checked in with me and were like how are your games how how is your main event going um you know and and helping to motivate each other um to to stay positive really and keep that that attitude in place um also it might really just help you because at the end they might have extra tickets um which might help you get that play mat right they might have two tickets and to them that's just a pack right um, but to you, that that might be the two tickets you need uh, to finish your 90 tickets to get the Cinderella playmat. Uh, we executed a lot of trades uh, right at the end. Um, we traded a Diablo. We traded uh, a foil Diablo to somebody to, for, for tickets to be able to, to get the final 10 tickets we needed to get uh, the Cinderella playmat. So, um, you know, hang out with the people you know, talk to them, and work together so that you all can succeed uh, in reaching your goals. Um, Hakuna Matata, no worries, right? Don't get down on yourself. Even if you go 0-2 in a match, it's nine rounds. It's a big event, um, especially now that they've added, you know, prize ticketing for, uh, for points, right? Um, the chance that you will make top cut is very, very low in the main event, but the chance that you are going to win some prize tickets and maybe take home a really cool promo card or a Cinderella playmat. Um, you know, one game loss is not the end of the world, right? Take a breath, clear your head, turn the page. Your deck didn't do what you wanted it to do, right? It's just a game. We play to have fun. Um, every game is a learning experience. If you're not having fun, take a break, go outside, get some fresh air, uh, drink some water. Um, when, when people play poker, there's a, a word um, that they use called tilt. And I think it, it's a thing here too. Um, if you get a, a frustrating judge's call, right, um, that doesn't go your way or, um, you know, a, a situation that you didn't think was quite fair or a, an opponent took advantage of, of a situation or, or, um, or your deck just didn't do what you wanted it to do. Um, if you get tilted if you if you lose your cool if you lose your head you're going to make dumb decisions right and you're going to punt away the next game that was maybe winnable right uh because your head wasn't there your head wasn't in it right so avoid tilt um hakuna matata right if you lose a game no worries i lost a game on to the next one um bring some spice like Sometimes surprising your opponent will win you games. In round one, I played against a steel fossil list, uh, which was something I wasn't expecting, right? It was it was really off meta. It was not something I was expecting to, to face. And 
Uh, she played the four cost Tinkerbell, which she was using to try to get away or get around Bucky, right? Because this is not a draw effect. When you play this character, look at the top four cards of your deck. You may reveal a character card and put it in your hand. That's not a draw effect. So it gets around um, Diablo, right? They don't get to draw um, on your turn when you get to put a card into your hand. So that's big, right? In the, in this meta. And then she shifted it into the giant Tinkerbell. And on turn five, she, she shifted it with, with four and then she attacked into me. And that was not something I was expecting. I was like, okay, it's a one, four body at quest for one. Like that's not the biggest threat. Let me take out the SME. Let me, you know, whatever, whatever. And then she shifted it and then she attacked me. That was not a line I was expecting. And I lost that game. Um, and that game was winnable. I had already brawled away um their gaston like i i was in a good spot at that point um but i lost that game because she shifted out tink and and kind of destroyed my board and um and then i really struggled to come back from that um i also played against an anti-bucky uh emerald steel deck um that was running tiana and raja and the meg to self discard um to be a, a big butt i ended up taking her two out um still but the games were very close um and it was just something i wasn't expecting right i i was running a, a red purple deck and, and singing king undisputed singing friends and uh i couldn't sing friends i couldn't draw cards right um and so i had to you know uh hopefully top deck that Maui and get that Maui into play and remove the Tiana so then I could play cards um, uh, or songs and, and be able to um, to sing them, right? So uh, stuff like that, really important, right? Um, you can surprise people. I, I played Li Shang in my uh, deck to play uh, Flynn, uh, Ryder, and then uh, Sisu, and then Li Shang. And uh, that won me games. Opponents didn't expect it. So uh, bring some spice, bring, uh, you know, something that's going to differentiate yourself um, because it, it might help you win games. Um, practice playing limited. Number seven. Uh, we do this a lot at home. You know, when we when we open packs, we don't just sit and rip them and and put the cards away. We, we, we want to make them last, right? That that experience of, of opening them. And one of the great things about that is we were rewarded this weekend because the limited format, excuse me, the sealed format was a big part of the challenge. The The side events had sealed um, and they play very differently from constructed and they're kind of a, a great equalizer in some ways, right? Because uh, everyone just has to play with what they got, right? You don't know what your opponent is playing. You don't know what the meta is, you know, what, what kind of cards they're going to play and cards that you might not play in constructed become very, very good in this format, right? Um, Isabella becomes very, very good in the limited format because she's evasive and she's something that you really have to answer and she has three strength. So you can't brawl her away unless you ice block her, right? So you have to have the right combo of things to deal with threats like that. So um, you, you have to look at your cards differently, right? And, and you can only really do that through experience, like learning what cards and archetypes are good in the limited format. There's not much removal. Um, so bodies are important. Big bodies are important. They're going to stick on the board for a long time, right? Um, and they're just going to keep questing. Um, evasive is always impactful in limited because there's just not as many evasive answers. Um, there's also very limit, limited card draw. You're going to be top decking by like turn six, right? And so being conservative with your cards, not flooding the board so that you can get everything removed, right? Being a little bit more thoughtful about the trades that you're making because you can't just draw cards and refill your hand. Um, card draw is a lot, lot harder. So you really need to look, okay, what's going to draw me cards, right? Medallion weights is probably the most consistent card draw this format, um, in the limited format. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, remembering stuff like that really, really important. Um, these two cards are, uh, goaded in the limited format. Chen Po is a huge body who comes in, is a, uh, 
a, a bodyguard, so now you can throw down two questers behind it and just quest to victory. Hidden Cove throws off the math for so many things, right? It allows you to more efficiently trade uh, because your characters won't die. Um, you know, now your Diablo survives a Peter Pan Shadow Finder. Your Diablo survives another Diablo. Um, Your Pegasus can take out a Pegasus, right? And live. Um, and so uh, things like that are, are really, really important. And so understanding what those cards are and the benefits they can give you will help you win games. Um, bring stuff to trade. Uh, you know, one of the, the coolest parts about uh, Lorcana and about trading card games is the community and the relationships and the um, the trades that, that you can make. Um, bring legendary meta cards, right? Um, we traded away a couple of Diablos after we were done playing Constructed uh, just because they happened to be in my wife's deck and um, we traded away them for tickets so that we could get the Cinderella um, playmat. Uh, enchanted cards. A lot of people had binders to trade of enchanted cards, of duplicates that they had pulled or, or just, you know, having an enchanted card isn't important to them. And if it's important to you, you can trade them. Um, you know, I, I wish I had brought some of my extra cards, uh, to be able to trade that way. Pins, play mats, slabs, all of those things are, are things that people are looking to trade for. Um, be prepared. Uh, you know, I went into the weekend with a bunch of kind of extra cards, some extra sleeves, hard sleeves. Uh, you know, you're going to get promos. You want to be able to sleeve those and protect those. Um, you know, I had brought some of uh, some cards to sideboard, but I didn't bring a couple copies of Queen's Castle. Um, I was playing a lower to the ground aggro RP, and I ended up really wishing that I had brought... Um, a couple copies of Queen's Castle and I ended up buying them from a vendor um, and I bought them for like six dollars which is like two dollars more than they are on TCG player I have tons of them here at home you know that I've opened from from League Knights and I spent twelve dollars on uh, buying two Queen's Castles uh, to slot them into my deck at the last minute um, and uh, I didn't have to right uh, if I had been prepared, I, I could have saved myself that money. Uh, and finally, remember to hydrate, remember to take care of your body, rest, eat food, you get a lunch break in the main event. Uh, you don't get one really on the second day if you're just playing side events, you kind of have to plan one for yourself. And we didn't really eat on Sunday, we just played games. Um, and, uh, you know, we were pretty starving after after the day. So eat food, it's a long weekend. Take care of yourself, take care of your body so your brain can keep working for you, right? Iced coffee doesn't count. Drink water. Um, I had a big water bottle that I took with me to all my matches. Um, sometimes refilling it in between matches was was hard, um, you know, to go and do that quickly because everyone's trying to get to their table and get started, um, you know, and not waste any time. But, um, you know, uh, it's really important to make sure you hydrate, make sure you take care of your body. Um, I can't, I can't state that enough. Um, anyway, those are, um, 10 things I, I wish I had really considered a little bit more going into the weekend that I think would have set me up for success a little bit better. Um, I hope this video was helpful and I hope, um, you know, this helps you prepare for Fort Worth, uh, for Toronto, for, uh, you know, the, the European ones coming up uh, you know, and, and ho helps you do a little bit better at these events. Um, I'm really excited about them. I'm hoping to make it to, uh, Vegas. I'm hoping to make it to Seattle. Uh, I'm not going to make it to Fort Worth or Toronto probably. Um, so I've got two more shots here this summer. Um, and, uh, you know, having, learned a lot of things from this one, especially as a new TCG player, especially as somebody who's never played in a tournament of this size. Um, you know, I, I, I learned a lot on this trip and I'm going to do a lot better uh, next time because of that. So um, good luck, everyone. Uh, good luck on your games. Good luck on your challenge efforts. Uh, I hope you make it to Top Cut and we'll see you in the next one.